What is up everybody? Bri Paz here, back again with another video, this time to react to David Lynch, How to Do a Jump Scare. So now I'm a little bit anxious in checking out this video because it's a jump scare. It's supposed to be about jump scares. And I saw in the comments, someone sent, someone said, the entire effing video is just one constant heart attack. Well done. So, I don't know what to expect besides a bunch of jump scares. A friend of mine sent me this video just to check it out. And from what I saw and I glimpsed in the comments, from what I saw, like when I skimmed the comments, I realized I should do a reaction video of this because it's probably going to be a lot of jump scares and it's going to get me. So, let's see how this goes. Ugh. Of course, I got to do it with headphones. My goodness. Having this much hair and using the is not very friendly with these type of headphones. It's just ah, too much going on. Anyway, let's check this out. The art of the jump scare. Oh, boy. I remember reading an article by Brian Bishop of The Verge years ago on the art of a jump scare, where he described its components and compared it with the three stages of illusion detail. Um, the art of jump scare, it generally is supposed to be something quiet, right? It's supposed to, it's supposed to be something quiet, just then, 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 and then you kind of don't know what's supposed to happen, and all of a sudden, rah! Right? That's pretty much it. I don't know. Let's see what they, what they well, say. Christopher Nolan's The Prestige. There's the pledge, where a character is placed into a potentially dangerous situation, the churn, where the threat is seemingly resolved and the tension and removed, then... and the prestige, where an unexpected scare hits us without warning. This specific structure seems to have become the golden rule for horror film jump scares, and if you pay attention, you'll realize that pretty much every jump scare out there follows this exact formula with minor deviations. Yeah, um... So what was that he said again? He said on the, the pledge, or the prestige, I mean, I don't know what to really call it. It's just kind of like, okay, you're waiting for something to happen, and everything's kind of mostly quiet, so the music is not, is pretty minimal. And then all of a sudden, so, so like, you kind of have to be, like, kind of quiet, so you don't have to, like, not really know what's happening. So you kind of have to be, like, waiting for something, waiting for, for some type of stimulus, and it's quiet. So you need it to be quiet for it to all of a sudden, rah, pop up. So that's the, that's the thing. You need that big, jarring contrast, I guess. Let me show you a quick example. A okay. man is looking around a creepy-looking house and hears a noise. That's the pledge. That's the pledge. You know, I should, like, turn off the lights <laughs> to watch this. I feel like I, I need to be, like, in the dark to, to, to watch this. But then you can't really see my face and can't see my reaction. So we got to compromise. Here we go. He then takes the flashlight and examines the space where the noise came from and finds nothing. That's yeah. the turn. It's quiet. It's Double quiet. Double check for safety, and it seems like the problem is solved. See? Oh, oh! There it is. There it is. The prestige. There it is. I, I paused it right as it happened, but I was about to say, it's quiet. And then you just get a big noise. Boom! Out of nowhere. Do you see what I mean? Okay, one more. A nurse hears a loud cracking from one of the patient rooms, Whoops. so she enters, tensed up, carefully examining the room, the exorcist only to find out that it was just some ice cubes from a cup of water. And then? The problem seems resolved until... Can't I get any sleep? What the hell do you want? <laughs> God, I'm out here. I can't get any sleep. <laughs> oh man, he's lucky she didn't smack him. Oh my God. The prestige. And no, not all jump scares are in three stages. Wait, first of all, why are the closed captions in Korean? I don't know what's the deal with that. Let me turn that off. Okay. Just some of them only have two, like this scene from David Sandberg's short film, Lights Out. Lights Out. Whoops. There's a person. Whoops. <laughs> the music. Oh, it's this scene from Insidious. You know what, let's add this. Yeah, just boom. It's, it, it's always the same thing, so it's easier to like for me to expect it. To the list. Cooper's life, this is about all mankind. There is a moment. Whoa, okay. That, that kind of got me. A little bit. 
I was like kind of like amping myself for it. <clears throat> and I'm sure we've all seen this. What the heck? <laughs> what the? Burp. Okay, what the heck? Whoa. Yo, birds, what the heck is wrong with you? Yo, this is like the Alfred Hitchcock movie, but they're crazy. What the hell? Okay, maybe not that one. Kamikaze birds. What I'm trying to say is that we've come to an era where making breakfast turns into a jump scare and with its overabundance has completely lost its value, being perceived as cheap and lazy. Even when it does get creative, breaking the cliché structure and approaching the audience with a fresh jump, something always feels lacking, doesn't it? <laughs> As if <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> there is no substance to the fright. But it's not the technique itself that's. A is that Natalie Portman? No. Fault. It's the way they're used that's the problem. You see, a jump scare isn't just a loud. <laughs> what the heck, dude? What? Oh my goodness. I mean, I saw that movie, that's Django. Wow. Wow. What many horror films seem to have forgotten is that jump scares are actually meant to bridge the scenes of a film, conveying its central idea while, sure, also startling the audience. Whoops. But as a shock that's carried over to the next scene, not relieved and done with. Whoopsies. Now, there's one director who's not really known for horror films, but who I think is one of the best directors out there when it comes to creating genuine scares. Mm -hmm. David Lynch. David Lynch. And now they're about to show me an advertisement. Oh boy. Here we go. $1,200. How do I skip this? Um, $5,000. And this one is $3,000. Okay, let's skip. Skip and. Back to the video. There's a scene from his 2001 film Mulholland Drive that I think demonstrates the most perfect use of a jump scare, defying the conventional rules I've mentioned before. To give you a brief context, this scene happens roughly 12 minutes into the film and has nothing to do with what's previously been shown. And? This is the first time we see these characters and we have no clue of who or where they are and why the scene is even happening. In the film's defense, the scene is meant to be this way and is purposeful not just to the scene itself, but to the rest of the okay. film. So the scene starts off with two men in a restaurant named Winkies. Winkies. Man A opens up the conversation by saying how, uh, okay. how he's had a dream of this exact dream place. This place. Man B isn't exactly happy. That's not Michael J. Fox. Happy he's brought here is just it? for a dream. Kind of looks like him, but not exactly. Dream tale, but decides to listen. Man A explains that it's the second dream he's had and that they're both the same dream, unfolding the same way. Starting off with him sitting at this exact table and the other man standing by the counter. And he adds that both uh -oh. of them were petrified beyond description for some reason. We, like the other man, are confused but curious. Man A goes on with his story saying that There's a man at the back of this restaurant. He's the one who's doing it. That it's his horrifying face that the man never wishes to see again outside the dream. And that's it. They're here to see if that man from the dream is out there to get rid of this god-awful feeling. Okay, okay, it's really a long explanation, dude. That's quite a long build-up for a jump scare, you may think, but yes. what happens from here on is even more interesting. Right then. Man B gets up to pay for the meals, and right at that moment, This is where the real buildup begins. The moment the characters and the audience realize that there is a man outside. So the two step out, and following the lead of uh -oh. man A, we head to the back, uh -oh. back of the restaurant, going toward the climax we know. Oh man, he's scared. Look at his face. Is coming. He's all sweating. He's like, oh, don't make me do this again. It's been two times already. But are not ready to face. The camera focuses on objects and signs that we instinctively know are from the dream. Uh, why is it two, two shots? Is it is that on purpose or is he like just showing us the two separate? What's going on here? The reality unfolding just the same way. He's hesitant to reach the back, as are we, but determined to end this fear, he continues. Uh oh, here we go. So you're just gonna pop out? 
Or is he gonna turn and see him? Whoops! Nah, <laughs> he fainted. In the face. And this I like how the other guy does not even react. The other guy's just, uh, hey, are you okay? And it's like, not even... Scene ends. I obviously didn't show the entire thing, so I recommend you watch the full scene separately, but you probably still agree that it was a very unsettling encounter. If you think about it though, everything about this scene is counterintuitive. Firstly, we don't even know these characters. Having no emotional attachment to the characters on screen should be a barrier in creating an atmosphere for an effective scare. That's it. Also, the scene is absent of both the turn and the prestige. There was no misdirection. We knew the scare was coming and when it was gonna happen. So why then does the scene work? And more importantly, perfect. Before anything, in a mind- Was it because of the face? Because you didn't know what type of face it was gonna be and then it just pops up like, hello. Like what I expected, hello. And just, it just pops up out of nowhere. It looks like she like put her face in mud and then just came, hello. And a spoiler warning for those who haven't watched the film. Whatever. Mulholland Drive at the end of the day is all about a dream. The audience isn't aware of this yet, but yeah. the scene nonetheless perfectly set I figured. sets the ground for what's to come, strengthening the rest of the film with its hypnotic setup. First, it takes place in the middle of the day, at a diner full of people going against the formalities of a horror film, transforming a place of security into one that is threatening. When there is light, it's always overexposed, hinting at the unearthly nature of the setting, and when the characters are finally outside, what seemed like a bright daytime has converted into an ambiguous one, exactly like the dream the man had. It's not day or night. It's kind of half night, you know? Uh, it looks pretty day to me. The sound design is carefully crafted so that no other characters are heard and the voices of the two men are private, putting them into a trance-like state as if the place is secluded. Of all people, you're standing right over there. And the people surrounding them mere mm. constructs of their mind. The result is a discrepancy between what we hear and what we see. A dreamlike sensation that augments the appalling narrative. The unknown man enters the scene as a loud. <laughs> That's not a that looks like a lady who threw her face in mud. Muffled noise, but the sound immediately gets drowned and we're left with an ominous sub bass instead of the usual bang that often accompanies the jump scare. This is weird because dreams that I've had, it's weird. It's been a long time since I've been woken up out of a dream. In my case. In my case, it's like the dream happened. Like in, in my dreams, I, I have something happens and then like instead of waking up, I stay in it and kind of like deal with it. It's weird. It, it's weird. But anyway, let's continue with this video because that's a separate side note. Nope. Not to mention that the pacing of the conversation throughout is slightly off as well. Uh, here comes advertisements again. This is Webflow Interactions, the only tool that brings all the animation power of CSS and JavaScript into a comp There are awkward pauses and moments of disconnection between every line that's delivered, and it further blurs the line between what's real and what's not. In fact, everything is meticulously planned for this exact purpose. For example, that man at the back of the restaurant is actually a woman. Her name is Bonnie Ahrens. Huh? Oh, the man at the back of the restaurant. Yes, it's a woman. That's what I, I, I was just saying. That doesn't look like a dude, it looks like a lady. Who you may recognize as the nun from The Conjuring 2. She's deliberately introduced the as the man because as- So he thinks a man is a woman instead, you're just like, what the heck? Subtle as it may be, that adds to the uncanniness of the whole scene. Which brings me lastly to the camera work. Except for the stationary shot of the Winkies, the rest are all unfixed, either on a crane or seemingly handheld, unsteadily floating in the air like a ghost. Not only does this create an elusive, surreal- And they're still using the rule of thirds. ...real atmosphere, but it builds tension and a sense of uneasiness for the scene that might otherwise feel stale. Also note that the conversation mostly features over-the-shoulder shots to establish a connection between the two characters. That man B, in spite of his indifferent attitude, is on the same page and that they are both inevitably a part of this nightmare. 
The shot also tends to move out of the OTS shot into an isolated single shot to inform us that the story being told is at its most crucial, and at the same time serves to emphasize that the other character may be finding the situation to be indiscernible, or at the very least is going through his own thoughts. That's a lot of reading into. That's a lot of reading into this thing that you're doing. It's nice to like interpret this type of stuff to do these type of videos, but dang, dude, that's a lot of reading into it that you're doing that the other character can't empathize with. The dreamlike crane shot spontaneously shifts the perspective from over the shoulder to single and vice versa, and so the subtle buildup of tension is only unconsciously piled up within us, while also keeping us entertained. The diner scene ends by having the camera stay at the table, and we understand that thus far the camera was simply following the character's lead. Once the men are outside, the camera now stays one step ahead. And it's showing like Christian stuff in the background, uh the cross guiding them and in turn forcing us to face the fright that awaits at the back of the restaurant each step of the way our fear becomes materialized hey, you look at his face he's like sweating and the doubt transforms into certainty that the th thing will appear the revelation is particular but i knew something was going to pop out literally daunting because of this buildup, but also because the camera makes sure to have it fill up the entire frame to maximize the surprise and lessen the chance of us discerning its exact features. Notice how the creature isn't fully caught by the camera and then he just ah, and he faints when it re-enters the frame to hide behind the walls. With a blink of an eye, it's gone from the frame and from our memory and we're left alone in shock. Not by its looks, but by its existence. A more lasting terror. Alright, well, so far, whoever said that this whole video is like a heart attack, this entire effing video is just one constant heart attack. Uh, I mean, I wasn't expecting this to be a tutorial tutorial. I thought it was going to be something where you're just going to be throwing jump scares in, like, over and over and catching us off guard and tricking us. Like, one of those, like, parody or, like, funny kind of explanation videos. But, anyway... And then we cut to this. Is he dead or has he just fainted? One can't be sure, but it's a traumatic aftermath that allows for no relief and therefore no ending. The tension is still high because the characters aren't okay. And as we desperately try to regain our composure, Lynch gives you this as the last thing we see before the scene ends. <laughs> You're like, what? Where is it? Where's the person? Well, that's... The pledge that keeps you anxious to check every corner, suspect every movement for the rest of the film. Oh man, this is like the game Doom. This this kind of reminds me of the game Doom when I would play this game, and I I would purposely like try and like I play it with headphones. I would like turn off the lights, and I try to play the game like that. That was scary. I mean, it's the old like you know, it's an old. 3d i mean an old uh pixely computer game you know from the 90s but like the the feeling of like when you're going around to like shoot these like monsters and then you're starting to hear like it, you're like in an empty area and then you start hearing like <laughs> and like i could hear it like in either one of the ears and like i'm like oh my god like there's someone here somewhere but like you don't know exactly like where they are right away but you could hear them that kind of like made me anxious that game Oh man. But anyway, let's continue. And perhaps even for the rest of the night. But you won't find anything because that's the turn. Uh oh. And you'll feel like the threat has been removed. Oh, something's coming. Until. Until. Why are we going back to this? The Prestige. Where is it? Thanks everyone for watching my video. What an amazing scene. I had a lot of fun with this one as always. Throw a scare in here. Come on, dude. And I hope you enjoyed it too. If you'd like to support my work, I have a Patreon account. Oh boy. The I don't think there's anything else after this. Ah. Uh... So that's what it was. Well, yeah, I don't see anything I've else. I've seen booklets, monthly podcasts, and various other things. Want to chat? Well, anyway, that was David Lynch. I don't know too much about the guy. I thought this was going to be like kind of something else where it was just going to be somebody who was just going to 
keep throwing jump scares at us randomly throughout the video rather than just explain how to do a jump scare like an actual educational video of how to do something i thought he would throw in some more just randomly oh well anyway thanks for watching this video i hope you enjoyed and i will see you later please if you have any videos or anything you'd like me to check out and do a video for, leave it in the comments below. And if you haven't yet, please give this video a like and subscribe. And I'll see you later.